It's often the little things, small behaviors, that can change our lives. That's the power of a financial edge. I'm Ed Meek. I'm a financial advisor with a passion to help you retire early, save more, and live better. Welcome to Ed's Edge, the podcast to help you live the life you've always wanted. Welcome back. We've given you some information on the defined benefit plan. Now it's time for the nuts and bolts. There's pros, there's cons. We're going to go over some generalizations, give as much information as we can so you can really get a good understanding. But there's going to be exceptions. But let's dive right in. So we know what you're thinking. If I'm utilizing a plan like this, what exactly am I getting myself into? Um, first and foremost, let's discuss who these plans are for. If you are a small business owner, a partner in a business, self-employed, have some form of 1099 income, things like that, often you are a prime candidate. Now, the second part of this qualification is high income earner. If you, if you earn a high amount of income, it allows you to sock away more income and, and take that off of your taxes as we discussed. So um, those are the two main points. And um, again, a quiz online that we will post will help you really dig in and, and make sure that this is for you. So there's some limitations to the plan. We know we can put away a lot of money pre-tax, but there are limitations. How much we can put away each year, and then we have to cap out. You know, eventually there's a limit. As of this year, 2023, 3.4 million or so is the maximum we can attain for a benefit. Again, that that amount will increase each year a little bit. And then how much we can put away each year. Let's look at an example. We have an example of a married couple. They work together. They split the income that they make. As you can see, they're about five years away from retirement. They're going to sock away, put away as much as they can into this plan pre-tax. In this example, $442,000 pre-tax between a couple. Just massive, massive amounts. Way more than, as we said, in that those defined contribution plans, those 401ks, where they could have probably put away close to $140,000. Um, here's an extra $300,000 into this plan. They do that. They, they save $163,000 maybe more in their state. And then the benefit that they attain, you can see when they hit, hit retirement is 1.3 and $1.8 million. Um, just a massive lump sum to be able to live off of. And what I'm seeing on that is $163,000 in tax savings every single year, I can contribute that amount. It's not a one-time deal. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it's flexible. Sometimes it can even be more as you get older, but it's you can kind of think of it in that way, yeah. Yeah, so three keys to the plan, call it. Number one is we want to be in good standing with the IRS in this plan. Remember, you're creating a pension for your business. And typically, we want to see these plans in place at least three, four, five years, somewhere in that range. Uh, minimum three years. Um, and so we don't want to just set this up make a one-time contribution and then close it down. It, it needs to be in place for a period of time. Now, there are exceptions and you can end it before three years. We'll get into that more specifically if that's ever a concern for you. But again, think of, ah, I need to be in place for three years. That's number one. Number two is the range of contribution as you alluded to each and every year. We'll use an example of $100,000 to $200,000 is the range to put in each year. So it does give you some flexibility, although you do have to meet the minimum and the maximum. Um, and how that's calculated is uh, from an actuary, which we'll talk about soon. Think about, again, range of contributions to put in each and every year. And that range is determined by that situation for that person, right? Um, some people's ranges are different. Yeah, exactly. It depends on the income and, and, and so on and so forth. So age, Income, years away until retirement are the key variables to that formula. Mm -hmm. Third and final point is, 
again, this plan is for your business. So all employees of that business take part in the plan. Thousand hours or more a year, if they work for you, they're in the plan. You can discriminate against certain people depending on, again, their age and their hours and everything you mentioned there. Um, but typically, the less employees you have, the better. Partners are great. Yeah. Two or three partners, and that's it. Really significant tax savings on that. So, um, worth mentioning everybody that works for the business full time counts. Right. If there's some flexibility in there, but you still have to contribute for, for everyone. That's right. What if, what if things change? You can't contribute one year or there's that range. Remember I mentioned that, you know, the range could be in one person's situation, a hundred or $200,000. There's a difficult year. Something happens. You can't put in the hundred thousand. These plans are flexible where they can be amended. They can be amended in a variety of different ways. We don't you know, see people doing it all the time. No, no one really wants to amend it all the time, but it can be done from time to time. There's flexibility. That defined benefit that we talked about, it can be altered. We can make the benefit lower if we need to. If somebody starts off and they can only make certain contributions, the defined benefit, if you do better, can be, you know, increased. So there's flexibility, but um, things can be changed. Yes, yes. And so... One of the common questions we are asked from the, the individuals that have set up this program with us is, how does it work logistically? Who's involved? It seems like there's a lot of moving parts potentially. How do we get down to this, the bottom of, of the players? And so uh, let's talk about that. So there are four key players, we'll call it, in this plan. So first you have your accountant. Many of you, I'm sure, have one already. They are important in, in being on the same page with this plan, understanding how it works so you can get the right tax write-offs. Uh, secondly is the actuary or the third-party administrator. They are very important in the plan to set everything up the right way, make sure you're in good standing with the IRS, so on and so forth. So third is the custodian. This is the company that holds the account of which the plan was created. Examples are... Fidelity, and Schwab. Fourth is investing the money. And we put this as a side here. If you notice on this slide, we coordinate all this for our clients that set up these plans. So frankly, you don't have to. Um, but this investing the money is a really important player. We actually wanted to add that in. It's a very important deal with these programs. So, Ed, let's, let's talk about that. So... As you can see, we, we help people coordinate all four, and then we help them invest the money as well. The reason why it's good to see and understand this is these plans, since we're attaining a certain benefit, we have to make sure we manage the money in a way where we hit the benefit in an appropriate way. I will say I have an example. It's an unfortunate example of somebody who insisted on taking one of these, some of the money that's in one of these plans, invested it very aggressively. We do not encourage that. Very aggressively lost a tremendous amount of money in some stocks thinking they were going to hit some home runs. And now they have to make extra contributions into the plan. So the plan encourages us to make sure it's steadier. And that's what the plan is structured for. It's more moderate returns. And we can hit those returns a lot easier by investing in it a particular way. If you want to be aggressive, you probably have money in other investments. In fact, what we do is, is we work with clients and say, all right, let's look at your whole big picture. Whatever money's in this plan, we're going to manage it a certain way. And money that you have in other areas, we're going to manage that in a certain way. And that way, in the big picture, you have the right kind of asset mix. But super key to manage this to try to get steadier returns. Yeah, it's again, uh, when I hear the word pension, security, stability. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's what you're doing is you're creating that pension. So forgive me on this, me and my baseball nerdiness, we'll call it. Um, we're not hitting home runs here. Singles and doubles are the goal. Yep, that's right. To, single, to single, single, once in a while a double, but we just need singles. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. All right. Costs associated with this plan. I'm sure that's a question on your mind. Let's go over that generally speaking, because we want to we wanna be very clear on, on what to expect if you use this type of program. So year one involves two factors setting up the plan, and then the annual filing associated with the plan. That's done by our actuary. 
Um, the year one is the highest cost you'll experience with the actuary. It's it ranges between three and four thousand dollars as a fixed amount per year. Might be a little bit higher, might be a little bit lower, but ballpark uh, figures three to four grand. Mm -hmm. Then each and every year after that, two to three thousand mm -hmm. dollars fixed amount from the actuary. Those are good numbers to kind of keep in mind. Like if you're looking at others, we have come across some people who pay much more than that, and that's an exorbitant amount if you're paying much more than that. The accountant cost, you know, you pay him or her who you pay, um, you know, their their standard fee. And then when we help invest the money, of course, it's a it's a percentage rate um, associated with what we manage and making sure that this plan is, in fact, strategized properly. So um, there are some fees associated with this. And I know a lot of you might think, well, gosh, that can add up. But let's take a step back. So really what we want to do is when when these plans are put in place, we got to compare these costs to all the tax savings. Example, you invest $200,000 in one of these plans, you're in the 37% bracket, that automatically gives you $74,000 in tax savings. Plus, if you're in a state, it's even more. But let's just say you're not in one of those states, $74,000 in tax savings. Then you have to pay three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 and just for an actuary to do this, that's a good that's a good trade off. Now, if you have some employees, you might have to contribute to them. You know, one example is I'd referenced in in the other episode was uh, that uh, doctor. He contributes fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a year. He gets about the same tax savings. So still massive, massive benefit. So even though there's costs, your tax savings are exorbitantly much, much better. Good trade off. Well said. Well said. Yes. You know, cost in the absence of value is just cost. Right. But when you see the value associated with it, it's it's often a no-brainer. We've had so many clients tell us that, no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the money you save then, and then the money you save when it's growing, it's just these exorbitant amount, very, very high dollar amounts that is worth paying the cost and the fee across the board in order to, to get all of that. Well, we hope you are at least minimally intrigued by this. And if so, again, we encourage you to go online, take a short quiz. It'll take you two, three minutes. It'll um, answer the questions you might have, which is, do I qualify? What does this mean? And, and get in touch with us. Uh, you know, We'll talk to you about your specific situation and help connect you to the right people if, in fact, you do qualify. Did you forget something, James? I did. I did. All right. Now it's my turn. I, I allowed you to talk last time about it, but I have to take the reins over. One of my favorite types of food is Italian. And fortunately, I think you experienced this recently. We have an Italian place in our town that where the office is here, Wheaton, Illinois. It's good, solid, stable, really good Italian food. And I mean, the atmosphere is great. It's called Il Sogno. It's in downtown Wheaton. And you didn't get to experience this, but I will tell you, in the summer, if you're able to go to downtown Wheaton, I would encourage you, maybe this might be the first restaurant you want to go to, is because they have the only, I think, restaurant in town where you can eat on top of the roof. It's wonderful. You can kind of oversee the suburbs. Um, and if it's a warm, warm night, um, the food is great, great Italian. You can't go wrong on almost any dish. Really, any dish. I've never had anything bad there, but I would encourage people to get a good Italian meal there at El Sonio. You know, you know when it's an Italian place when you can immediately have oil and vinegar with a little cheese with bread. Yep. And that's what I experienced right away from this Italian place. Dimmed lights, that type of feel. So, well, in fact, you and I think it was my wife were making fun of me for that, remember? <laughs> yeah. I like put a bunch of... Uh, olive oil on there and a bunch of Parmesan. I just kept going like this with my olive oil and Parmesan and everybody was like, what's going on? I was like, this is the best part right here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. So definitely check it out. We'll post that online uh, in downtown Wheaton. So thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you next time. Yep. This podcast represents an assessment of the market environment at a specific point in time, should not be relied upon as investment advice, and is not intended to predict or depict 
performance of any investment. Any specific recommendations or comparisons that are made as to particular securities or strategies are for illustrative purposes only and are not meant as investment advice for any viewer.